What is diabetes? How many types of diabetes are there? What is the root cause of diabetes? Is it genetic? Lifestyle? Idiopathic? How do we diagnose diabetes? What is the treatment? Can it be cured? What are the complications associated with diabetes? Most of all what can you do about it? Diabetes is a chronic disease characterized by a high blood sugar level due to the body unable to move glucose, a type of sugar, to the cells for energy use. Glucose is the main energy source for the cells. Cells unable to use glucose for energy despite enough glucose level on the blood. Normally the body has a mechanism to control how much sugar enter the cells, and how much remain in the blood by means of two important hormones called insulin and glucagon. Insulin move blood glucose into the cells and reduce blood sugar level, while glucagon increase blood sugar level. Both these hormones synthesized and secreted by a group of pancreatic cells called the islet of Langerhorn. Insulin synthesized by the beta cells of the islet of Langerhans located in the center. Glucagon synthesized by the alpha cells of islet of Langerhans located in the periphery. Insulin binds insulin receptors on the cell's membrane and allow glucose to be transported into the cell, but glucagon does the opposite. Glucagon causes the liver to make glucose from other sources and break down glycogen to release more glucose into the blood and increase blood glucose level. Types of diabetes. There are two form of diabetes know for the public, type 1 and type 2 diabetes, but most cases of diabetes we see today is type 2 diabetes. There are other subtypes of diabetes not common among the general public such as maturity onset diabetes of the young or simply called MODI, gestational diabetes and diabetes insipidus, which is completely different from other form of diabetes. Diabetes type 1 also called insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. Less common than diabetes type 2, and it is caused by an autoimmune response towards the beta cells of pancreas and damaging insulin-producing cells. Losing beta cells means losing insulin, and losing insulin means more glucose accumulate in the blood because it cannot enter the cell without insulin presence. This process goes on for months or even years before any symptom appears. Type 1 diabetes mostly seen among children and teenagers. Symptoms of diabetes type 1. Polyphagia, glycosuria, polyuria, and polydipsia. Polyphagia means excessive or extreme hunger despite enough glucose in the blood. Because glucose cannot enter the cell, causing the cells to starve for energy. Adipose cells, fat cells, start breakdown fat and muscle tissue get breakdown to release protein into the blood to be utilized for energy source. Both result in unintended weight loss and excessive eating polyphagia. Because of this high level of blood glucose, when blood filter through the kidney some of the glucose spill into the urine and this is called glycosuria. Glucose osmotically active which means water follows it, and that increase urinations, and this is called polyuria. Because of so much of urinations people with diabetes become dehydrated and thirsty this is called polydipsia. Diabetes type 1 patient completely depend of insulin throughout their life, that is why sometimes diabetes type 1 referred as insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. One of the most common and life-threatening complication of diabetes type 1 is diabetes ketoacidosis, DKA, which cause increased acidity in the blood. Increased acidity in the blood has serious effect on the body. The patient developed Kuzmal respiration which is rapid and labored expiration to expel the carbon dioxide out of the blood to reduce the blood acid level. During stressed condition, the body release epinephrine which stimulate the release of glucagon. As we already know glucagon elevate blood glucose level, that cause loss of glucose in the urine, loss of water, dehydrations, generation of ketone bodies and ketoacidosis. 
Ketone bodies break down to acetone and scrap out through breathing giving the otter fruity smell and the person breath. In severe cases, it can cause nausea, vomiting, mental states change, cerebral edema, and even death. Treatment of these patients is fluid, insulin, and electrolyte, and potassium. Type 2 Diabetes Mellitus Also called non-insulin-dependent diabetes mellitus. In these patient, the person makes insulin, but the cells does not respond to it despite the body provide the normal amount of insulin. This called insulin resistance. Since the cells are not responding to insulin, the beta cells start producing more and more insulin to control the high level of circulating blood glucose level. That cause increased number of beta cells, beta cell hyperplasia, and hypertrophy, increase beta cell size. All these changes are the beta cells trying to control high glucose level in the body by producing more and more insulin. These changes work for a while by keeping insulin level higher than normal. The beta cells, when they secrete insulin, they also secret islet amyloid polypeptide, amylin. Over time these beta cells get exhausted and become less in number, in size and die off. Now beta cells are lost, insulin level decrease blood glucose level is high, hyperglycemia, and we start seeing a typical sign of diabetes polyphagia, glycosuria, polyuria, and polydipsia. Unlike diabetes type 1 there is some level of insulin circulating in the blood, this means in these patient diabetic ketoacidosis don't develop. But diabetes type 2 patient can develop a condition known as hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state, HHS. This condition cause increased plasma osmolarity from dehydration and increased concentration in the blood. Although the exact mechanism is not known, obesity, luck of exercise and high blood pressure are risk factor. Excess fat cells release free fatty acid and that cause inflammation and that has strong correlation with insulin resistance. Many obese people don't have diabetes, and that suggests in diabetes type 2 genetic factor plays a major role. Gestational diabetes In some women, during a trimester of pregnancy, they experience a high level of blood glucose level. This called gestational diabetes. The cause is unknown, but it believed to be pregnancy hormones disrupt the insulin receptors. Mostly gestational diabetes resolve itself after pregnancy. Pregnant mother with gestational diabetes are at a higher risk of developing diabetes later in life. Controlling gestational diabetes is very important with the proper treatment because it may cause congenital heart defect or other health risk on the baby. Drug-induced diabetes some medications tend to develop a high blood glucose level as a side effect. The mechanism of such kind of diabetes more related to diabetes type 2 than type 1. Example of drugs causing high blood glucose level are steroid, glucocorticoid, oral contraceptive pills, diuretics like thiazide, loop diuretics like furosemide, HIV drugs like protease inhibitor, ritonavir, sequinavir, indinavir, lopinavir, just to mention a few. Maturity onset diabetes of the young, Modi. Rare form of diabetes. It can be inherited as an autosomal dominant fashion. Caused by a single gene mutations. Most of the causes are due to a mutation in glucokinase gene. Glucokinase enzyme mostly convert glucose into glucose 6-phosphate in the pancreas which is necessary step in insulin secretion. This cause ineffective insulin production and secretion. Modi mostly affect adolescent and young adults, but it can occur at any age. Just like other form of diabetes, Modi can cause all diabetes-related complications. Diabetes insipidus Diabetes insipidus is a different form of disorder and not related to insulin. It is associated with a luck of a hormone called vasopressin or antidiuretic hormone, ADH. Sometimes it is also caused by the renal unresponsiveness for this hormone. 
Polyuria, thrust and dilute urine are a typical sign and symptom of such type of diabetes. Vasopressin or ADH is produced by the hypothalamus of the brain and stored and secreted into blood circulation via a posterior pituitary gland. ADH act at the distal part of the kidney nephron for water retention. When the level of water in the body decreases, the pituitary gland release ADH to conserve water. Diabetes insipidus patient cannot regulate the body level of water and allow too much urine to be produced and passed out from the body. Types of diabetes insipidus There are two types of diabetes insipidus. Central type diabetes insipidus, this caused by damage to the hypothalamus or the pituitary gland by trauma, brain tumor, or illness affecting the normal production and secretion of ADH. Nephrogenic type diabetes insipidus, in this case the hypothalamus and the pituitary produce and secrete the normal amount of ADH, but the kidney does not respond to it. This problem can be congenital or it can be due to drug like lithium medication used to treat bipolar disorder. Complication of diabetes Diabetes patients are at high risk of developing several and serious health-related complications. Uncontrolled high blood sugar level for long period of time can lead to a serious and a life-threatening conditions. Diabetes can affect almost any organ in the body, but mostly it can affect the eye, kidney, heart, small blood vessels, nerve, teeth and so on. But the most common cause of death in diabetes patients are heart disease and kidney failure. Diabetic patient also at higher risk of developing infections. In developed countries, diabetes is a leading cause of cardiovascular disease, blindness, kidney failure, and the number one cause of non-traumatic amputation of lower extremities. Diagnosis Fasting glucose level, patient fast between 8 to 10 hours and blood sample taken and plasma glucose level measured. If plasma glucose level is less than 100 mg slash DL, it is considered normal. Plasma glucose level between 100 mg slash DL and 126 mg slash DL is considered pre-diabetic state. Plasma glucose level greater than 126 mg slash DL the patient can be diagnosed with diabetes. Hemoglobin A1c tells you the average of the last few months and does not require fasting. If the A1c level less than 5.7 is considered normal, between 5.7 to 6.5 is a pre-diabetic state and anything above 6.5 is considered diabetes. <laughs>